today we're gonna be talking about peach royalty. That's up next. everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today in the middle of May in 2022. Today we're going to give you a fruit highlight and one of our favorite fruits really of all time and that is the Florida Prince Peach. So the tree you see behind me here has been in the ground for just over two years. In fact, we planted this I believe it was either March or April of 2020. And when we put this in the ground, it was no bigger than the size of my pinky. We get these trees from Reed at RSI Growers, and he's really our go-to, at least here in the Phoenix area, because he grows all of his own rootstocks right here in Glendale, Arizona, and they are ideal for us here in the Sonoran Desert. One of the things you'll notice with our trees pretty quickly is that we have netting on the trees. Now, this year we actually tested a new type of netting, and it was a complete failure. What we're finding is that the half inch spacing on the netting itself is really key because the very, very small birds can get through the three quarter inch netting and they were tearing apart the peaches. In fact, yesterday we decided to go ahead and pull all the peaches off of two of our Florida Prince peach trees and over half of the fruit that we took from that tree had peck marks in it or were half eaten. The frustrating part with all that is the birds seem to basically just do a couple different pecks and move on to the next peach. Of course, then behind that, you've got bugs, ants, and all kinds of things that destroy the peach. Now, we still utilize those damaged peaches. All we simply do is just cut them up into small pieces, lay them across a cookie sheet or similar pan, put those into the freezer, and then put them into large freezer bags and use them for smoothies and things like that. But one thing's for sure, when it comes to peaches, the best thing we found is to go ahead and net your trees as soon as you start seeing damage from those birds. Now, because we have to use bird netting in order to protect the peaches on this tree from birds, we actually create what we call a harvesting notch when we do our pruning. What I do always create on all of my trees, especially these where I know I'm gonna have bird netting in here, and I wanna be able to open the bird netting from the bottom and get into the center of the tree to do harvesting without having to remove the netting completely, is I create what's called a harvesting notch. That'll give you an idea of how we design these. We're on the northeast side of this tree, and you can see we take the two pieces of bird netting that we put across this tree and create a seam right here and then we utilize clothespins. We use this similar to how you would basically unbutton a shirt to get into the tree itself in order to do the harvesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and get up in here and see what we have available to us this morning. So you can see, very easy for me to get my hand back here below the netting. Now we still have some damage in here, probably from different types of bugs. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick a lot of that fruit first. I can see that I've got a lot of damage right here on this piece of fruit, and I've got bugs that are in there. All right, so I have a piece of fruit here that I think is about perfect. What you're looking for when you're trying to decide whether or not to pick a peach is you have a blossom end, which is where the flower was, and then you have the top that's basically attached to the branch. What you really wanna do is have a little bit of give at the top where the branch is. That tells you that you have basically a fully ripe peach. I've got a couple in here, but there's one in particular I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest so we can try that today. So this will give you an idea of what a fully ripe Florida Prince peach looks like. You can see for us, it's about the size of a baseball. Now, the way we get fruit this size is we thin our peaches. In fact, we did our thinning just a few weeks ago. 
And what we do is we basically leave about a four to six inch spacing between each of the fruit. And that's what allows these fruit to get much bigger than they would if you didn't thin. Now, one other thing before we try this on camera is this fruit is a clingstone peach, which means the pit itself clings to the fruit. It's not freestone. A freestone fruit you could cut in half, twist, and it would basically separate from the pit. I'm not able to do that with this particular fruit, so instead of cutting it in half, breaking it open, and showing you the inside of the peach, I'm gonna have to go ahead and bite into this thing so you guys can see what it looks like. I'm not normally at a loss for words, but. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Let me tell you this, this is amazing. This peach, you guys, tastes incredible. It's a wonderful, strong peach flavor. You can see, hopefully you can pick it up on camera, just how juicy these peaches are, completely full of water and juice. And what's wonderful about getting them ripe off the tree is you get this really intense sweet flavor. Peaches have this fuzzy kind of skin on the outside, but when they're this juicy, you can't even tell. The skin itself is nice and thin, so you don't have that chewy consistency on the skin and just a very very good peach really really hard to beat when these peaches grow especially when they get really big the they have a tendency to kind of push into the branch and it might be hard to pick up here on camera there are indentations that run across the top of the peach here where the branch was What's really important when you're going to harvest these is that you cup the fruit and you pull down. Don't twist the fruit like this. If you do that, the branch that's sitting right in here will cut into the top of the peach and damage the peach. One more thing about peaches is this fruit here is not quite ripe. It'll be fully ripe in about a day or so. And what you can do with peaches is leave them on your counter and they will ripen up on their own. In fact, all of the peaches that you see in the grocery stores are actually picked well before they're ripe. And they ripen basically on the counters or in the stores themselves. Now that's one of the reasons why any peach that you get from the grocery store, with few exceptions, will taste nothing like the peaches that you get fully ripe from the tree. Because that's when they are the sweetest, and by the way, most nutrient dense. So a fully ripe peach is really the way you want to go. And of course, if you're growing them yourself, without, which I would highly encourage you to do, you're going to get the most delicious, sweetest, most nutritious peach that you can possibly get. If you're here in the Phoenix area, and really most of the desert Southwest, Florida Prince peaches are really hard to beat. One advantage to them, besides how wonderful they taste, is they're usually very easy to find. I know Dave Wilson Nurseries, they have these available to most of us out here. And then of course, we again, highly encourage you guys to consider Reed at RSI Growers. He has many different types of peaches and he typically has the Florida Prince available as well. But a fantastic yellow fleshed clingstone peach that grows wonderfully for us here in the Arizona desert. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on the channel, fruit trees being one of our primary focuses as we establish this new desert farm here in the Sonoran Desert. Would love to see you as a subscriber. Any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. In our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, yell to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne. Hello everyone. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today 
this is not gonna work out. <laughs> I'm gonna put them all, well, it won't help to put it back in. No, it doesn't even lava. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>